Lord, everybody. From the front to the back, praise the Lord, everybody. Such an honor to stand before you here today. I would be remiss if I didn't give honor to the Bishop of Norfolk Apostolic Church and the Associate Pastor of Norfolk Apostolic Church and Brother Green, uh, an honor to have you as well. Man, it is so awesome to be in the house of God on a Sunday night. Praise the Lord. Let's get to the word. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Job, verse 23, chapter 23, verse 12. Neither, uh, when you have it, and it's on the screen, go ahead and say amen. If you don't have it, it's going to be on the screen. Praise the Lord. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. So, in about a week and a day, God had filled me with the Holy Ghost for about 17 years. Woo! 17 years. Now, I got to say, through these 17 years, I haven't always been as stellar as I should have been. Praise the Lord. And some of you haven't always been as stellar as you should have been. That's, that's just the truth. But yet when we are faithless, he abides faithful. Amen. So through the years, God has been so good to me. Amen. And I'm not where I should be, I believe, but I thank God that I'm not where I used to be. I have struggles and temptations just like the next man. Holy Ghost will deliver you out of all of that. However, there are some hindrances in my life, and I'm sure in your life, that will kind of, that will prohibit you from doing the will of God for your life. And if I could boil it down uh, to, the, to my biggest struggle, and I can probably hear some witnesses when I say this, my imagination. Bless God. My imagination will take me to places, bless God, that I shouldn't be. Hallelujah. But the word instructs us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Out of 36 verses, that mention the word imagination, imagine, imagines, 35 of those are negative connotations. So we are instructed not necessarily to imagine, but to dwell on the word of God, to proclaim the word of God. So I begin to look up the word imagination in this particular text, because in different verses in the New Testament, it does have a different meaning. But this particular word was lagismos. Praise the Lord. Lagismos. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But what it really means, and this is something that jumped out to me, a reckoning or a computation. So, in other words, an algorithm. So putting something with something to come up with something that does not even exist. So in, in my life, I would reason with myself and I would talk myself out, reason myself out of the blessings of God, the miracles of God, witnessing to somebody, all because I put this with that and that with this and came up with something that totally obliterated the promise that the Lord had for me. And can I get a witness if some of y'all have done that too? <laughs> Hallelujah. We have a great cloud of witnesses in here. Amen. So lack of boldness plus basic understanding of the word, timidness and shy, no witness, algorithms, imaginations that we compose in our mind to keep us from going out and reaching the lost world. Lack of boldness, understanding, oh, fearful, uncertain, distrusting God, no faith, Algorithm, algorithms that we are putting in our mind that would hinder us from fulfilling the purpose of God. Negative things from friends, frenemies, family, Satan, computed in our mind to 
bamboozle us from receiving all that God has for us. So whether good or bad, imaginations can do a detriment. Even if they're good, I've had some things in my mind like, man, that sounds so good, man. Hey, this is the car I have. This is the car the Lord wants me to have. This is the house that I, but it wasn't for me. So I ended up disappointing myself all because I'm calculating stuff that was not for me. Amen. Again, we are not commanded to imagine, but to pray for vision and meditate on his word. Amen. These calculations, these imaginations will no doubt hinder the word of God in our lives. But I have news for you. This will not be my story. This should not be your story. This will not be your story. His word declares that we are healed. His word declares that we are filled. His word declares that we are free. In him we have the victory. Amen. So the apostle Paul, no doubt one of the greatest apostles that we can ever name, he had some hindrances in his life. He had some things in his mind and in his life that he could calculate to not do the will of God. We wouldn't have had a first and second Thessalonians. We wouldn't have had a book of Philippians. If he would have computed some things in his mind, algorithms in his mind to hinder him from fulfilling the will of God. But in the time of despair, the apostle Paul wrote something that's in our Bible and is found in the book of second Corinthians in verse 12 through nine. Verses chapter 12 and verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, my, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So in other words, it's not what I'm going to imagine. Because I'm going to have difficulties for the rest of my life. The only way to get away from those difficulties, church, is just to die. But Paul made it up in his mind that whether or not I have these hindrances in my life, I'm not going to choose to focus on what I can't do. I'm going to choose to focus on what he can do. Key. This is key. So I leave you with this. First uh, John chapter five and verse nine. If we receive the witness of men, what they say about us, what they do to us, what Satan says to us. OK, so a lot of times we can accept that. But it says the witness of God is greater. I said the witness of God is greater. Not less, greater. Greater. Say it to yourself, the witness of God is greater. So whatever comes in your life, Whatever circumstance that you have, whatever shortcoming that you have, begin to focus on God and not the shortcoming. In Jesus' name.